Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Sheila Bila coming to you with another review of Basketball Wives, um, episode five, Orlando. Um, the episode picks up where um, Danny and Megan, they have gotten together to have a lunch because, well, I guess it's breakfast because they had they got mimosas. So I'm assuming it's breakfast. And they are just discussing Mackenzie. And they named Mackenzie Minimeter or Ratatouille, one of many, or something like that. And Megan can remember the name, but child. <laughs> anyway, so the whole thing is Danny is saying that Mackenzie is a side chick and she's going to continue to call her a side chick because she was around when they were dating. And Danny says that she has the receipts that um that she has the receipts. And Megan's question is, are you sure? And um she actually she actually is starting to like McKenzie. She said McKenzie isn't really that bad. And they bring up the whole thing about, you know, Danny doesn't understand why McKenzie is not understanding where she's coming from because she was in the same place last year when it came to Dwayne and Neek. And um, Megan really just wants her to have a conversation with McKenzie that Danny needs to reach out to her so they can have a whole conversation so they could see who's lying and who's telling the truth. And at the same time, you know, the dude ain't really there. So both girls are really going to just go by what the man is telling them. Because according to Danny, they have been messing around and they still are messing around and they will still mess around to this day. Even though they're broken up, she says she still loves him and she wants to know how to she said she still loves him. He still loves her, but they won't need to know how to love each other and not be together anymore. So I don't know. I guess this is very, this is kind of, it's, it's just one of those situations when you just broken up and you really don't know how to place your feelings and emotion. Like the song say, I don't really want to go. I don't really want to stay. All I really need to know is, can we get it together? If that may be a part or together they need to get it together so that's what i get from this whole conversation and then she's going to have to sit down with mckenzie so they can i guess compare notes <laughs> that's what i get and then you have Lindsay. um her, her i think that's her husband her husband is overseas and he's really nonchalant. He really is just like, well, I'll do what I can when I can. I haven't talked to Brian yet to see if he's going to be there for the birth of their baby. And she says, she, you know, it's hard for her doing this alone. And if anything, she really just wants him to be there for the birth. And Lindsay says, you need to hurry up and get an extension. Well, get sign your contract late. So you can be here for the birth of the baby. He said he going to see what we can do in there across the bridge when they get there. I mean, I thought he really didn't care. I mean, that's how he lets off. But, you know, some people have that attitude like, well, you know, well, we'll, we'll see. I'll see. I mean, really, on the other side, he's trying but he's just not telling you he's trying. But he, I don't know. He just seemed weird. She said to know him is to love him. Chad, I don't know him. So he, to me, he, my first take was he probably got somebody in the other room while he on the phone with you. But I don't know him. So maybe he, that's just how he is and the way that he talks. And maybe he really, really want to be there, but he probably scared to get an extension. I mean, or, 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 or sign the contract late as they would say. So I don't know. They're going to have to work it out. You have Mulan. She went and picked up her, um, her sisters from Cincinnati. I believe one is 18. The other one is 13 and they get in the car and they ain't really got on no, they clothes. They, she got to get them some new clothes. She tells them to get her, um, her aqua four out of a purse, but child, that was Carmix. But when they, when a girl reaching into in the purse, she find one of her, you know, little vibrating toys. So I guess that was funny. But that was pretty much it with that.
Okay, so then there's a sit down with Ashley and Nikki. Nikki does hair and Nikki makes wigs. So Ashley's thing is she wants Nikki to make her wigs. And she said there is a cancer um, facility up above her store. And I guess she wants to do some type of partnership with them because her mother ended up dying from cancer in 2019. And Nikki's sister died like this past April. And I was really sad for her. Listen, it's not that I don't like Nikki because I don't know Nikki to like to like or dislike her. It's just her character on here is just rubs me the wrong way. But in this situation here, she was very vulnerable and I actually had empathy for her. So, yeah. So, Nikki, if you could kind of stay honest and truthful in this vein, maybe more of my people will gravitate towards you. But they're just going to work together and about getting the wigs and stuff like that. So they're going to partnership. All right, now this is the whole sit down. Now, Danny then came in there with her um, protect black women purse. Isn't Mackenzie, she's like black and white? Ain't her daddy, wasn't her daddy kind of light skinned child? I don't know. But anyway, this is the sit down here. And I'm going to, I'm not going to do this verbatim. The premise of this is, Danny says that Mackenzie was stalking her page to see. Danny says that Mackenzie was stalking her page. And because she was stalking her page, she knew that her and Rashad were in a relationship. Mackenzie's whole thing is I'm not no side chick because I didn't know anything about you. And he told me that y'all were not together. So I'm going by what he says. Danny says they broke up. Well, Danny says that Mackenzie started seeing Rashad in February and she took her ring off in March. So yeah, Mackenzie wants her to stop with the whole side chick stuff because I already said that. But Danny says she ain't changing it. She said, that's what you are and that's what you're going to continue to be. But Danny did say that they're not together right now. McKenzie felt as if that was validation because McKenzie been saying the whole time that they're not together. But according to Dan Danny, they still messing around because when he dropped the kids off, McKenzie said, I just left him. And Danny said, I just left him too because he just dropped the kids off to me and they messed around then. And then Danny keeps bringing up, I don't, we're, we're, we're just the same. We're in the same situation, whether you want to like it or not, because what was happening to you last, last year with Dwayne and Neek, Danny says that Dwayne was lying to Neek and Dwayne was lying to McKenzie the same way that Rashad is lying to Mackenzie and Rashad is lying to Danny. And Mackenzie says that Rashad ain't lying to her. <laughs> he only, so I'm just like, oh, okay. And then Danny said, well, why were you on my page? And Mackenzie said, well, I was just on your page because I was just trying to she said she was just trying to look and see if there were, if he was talking to anybody else or if there was any truth and if there was any relationship business or dealings with Danny and Rashad. And so Danny's whole thing is now, if you, if this man isn't lying to you and if I was not in the picture, as he told you, why are you lurking on my page to see if we together, then that means there is doubt there and you must think that he's doing something he had no business doing. Mackenzie's whole thing is she knew he had kids, but he always said he won with the baby mama. I'm just like, this is crazy. And then the conversation kind of turns because they started talking about, um, have you been around my kids? Have you been around my kids? Mackenzie smirks. And I didn't like when Mackenzie did that because it almost felt as if she had a one up 
on Danny because she was around her kids and I didn't like that. And then I didn't like the comment that McKenzie said that you're running around here stalking him for rent. I don't have to worry about that because Dwayne makes sure I'm good. And then I'm thinking, why would, if anything, if this man that you're with and if they had an agreement about him paying rent at the house where his kids are, because she has two kids with him. I thought she had three. She has two kids with him. Why are you holding that man accountable for not taking care of his kids the way that he should, making sure they have a roof over, over, over their head? That ain't cute, Mackenzie. Now, I kind of side-eye you on that. Because at first, you give this... Mackenzie give off this image as if she's like a good girl. But underneath that, Mackenzie is very conniving. She really is. And she knows what she's doing. And then, this is what I didn't like either. Because whenever Danny starts to almost try to spit facts or say what's ever going on with, with the relationship between Rashad and Danny, Mackenzie tries to over talk her so she can't get her point across. And I didn't like that either. And then Mackenzie tries to run away and all that stuff. And Danny said, well, go run away, run away. And, um, they said lame. Danny called her lame. Mackenzie called her ratchet. And then she called her something else. And then Mackenzie called her ugly. And I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that she gonna call this girl ugly. And it almost made me feel as if Mackenzie feels like, like she's better because of her complexion and because of her hair, whatever. Because I remember when Neek and Mackenzie was getting into it and Neek kept saying that Mackenzie was calling her ugly. And I didn't like that either. I'm like, why are you talking about this girl's looks? That has nothing to do with this conversation. And I don't think that Danny's ugly. I actually think that Danny is very pretty. It's just sometimes she get this old ugly attitude. But I don't think this girl is ugly by far. And then what does that say about your man if Rashad, your quote unquote man, if you can just, if you just look, if you, it's like, I don't know, like he dating ugly girls and and, and, and you are you are a come up or something. Like, I don't like that. I really didn't like that she did that. And that just kind of made me look at McKenzie like, girl, I really don't. I don't really. I don't know. I'm just giving you the side eye because you ain't deep, deep down in your heart. You are, it almost seemed like you have a better than complex. And I, I just because of your your physical features. And to me, to me, you look a little. See, and then that makes me start to talk about another girl and her features. Cause yo, yo, you look real busty. Like, I don't, let me stop. Let me stop. Cause I don't want to go there. I don't like to talk about women's features like that, but you, you started it. And I mean, you, I, right. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. You, I, right. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Anyway. So and that's the thing. I, I didn't like that. And um, at the end of the day, and on next episode, it looks like Rashad going to be there and he going to be all up in McKenzie's face. So I don't know, Danny. Danny, you just got to let it go and just do you. And I know it's hard to do, but it is what it is. You just got to. And I know, oh, my God, I know it's hard. But you got to boss up. You know what I'm saying? Just get on your boss thing. And that's the thing. And that's the one thing that Neek did have over McKenzie. And McKenzie couldn't mess with it because Neek is a self-made boss. Like she got her money deck. She got her money on deck. She got her followers up. Like in the grand scheme of things, Neek, Neek is the, is the hierarchy when it comes to, you know what I'm saying? McKenzie and Neek in regards to status wise. And that's another reason why McKenzie had to humble herself because when McKenzie had went to her live talking about Neek, McKenzie didn't know that the magnitude and the following that Neek had because them girls started coming at McKenzie like really, really hard to where she had to back off of her. And see, McKenzie didn't know that. And it's kind of sad too, because it's almost like, you know what I'm saying? Then, yeah, you got to get on your box stuff. You got to box up. You know what I'm saying? The best revenge is your paper. Do what you need to do. 
you know, because you are a beautiful woman. I don't, you know what I'm saying? You are a beautiful woman. You are smart. You are intelligent. You got your master's degree. You play basketball. You have a lot of accolades and a lot of accomplishments. So what this girl over here is talking about ain't nothing. Because the only thing I see that she is, is a baby mama. That's it. You know? And I'll leave it at that. Anyway. So now you have this thing with, um... With Milan and her sisters, and they're pretty much there. And, and Milan is just really trying to get her sisters on a straight and narrow. You like, you know, growing up right, getting an education, wearing clothes that fit. They already lost their brother. You know, there is that that's a moot point. You know, it's just real sad about it. And she's just trying to make sure her sister just get on the right path. And I can respect that. That's pretty much what this was about. Um, Megan had to sit down with her mom and her, yeah, I'm just going to overview this. Her mom, her mom feels as if she's entitled to Megan's success. Even though her mom really wasn't there for her like that, like that, her mom said she was going to take partial responsibility, not all of it. But at the end of the day, you didn't raise her. You left her to be raised by her grandparents. And the thing about it is, you left her to be raised by her grandparents and Megan has made a name for herself. And that was real wrong what you said. Instead of you hugging your daughter, loving on your daughter, telling her we're going to make this relationship right. You see she ain't in, in your face because she needs your love and affection and not you don't do anything for me. You weren't there for me when I needed you. Dang, that's what the daughter should be saying to the mama, not the mama saying that to the daughter. And then when she breaking down into tears, you're going to tell her, you know, don't crack us crying. I ain't going to really get a conversation. It's not going to, um, what she say? You're not going to be able to get a conversation across crying. So breathe and then have a good, you know, and then talk to me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even consoling her. You ain't doing nothing. So if I was Megan James, I really, I kind of hold back from you too. And then you're going to talking about, you think you, you have elevated so much, but when these lights cut out and when that green screen gone, you're going to really be in a dark place and Megan left. And I would have left too, because it seems like you are jealous of your daughter. That's all I got from that conversation. You're jealous. And the part about it is you had no hand in helping her be who she is. And you are very resentful in that. So you can't even hold nothing over her head talking about, I got, I did this for you because you can't say you did nothing for her because you didn't. So anyway, Megan, it'll be all right. Now they having a birthday party for um, Chanel, which is Mackenzie and Dwayne's daughter. Um, Ashley came and she gave Mackenzie a, a Barbie doll for every team that Dwayne played on. Child, I actually thought that that was shady, but Mackenzie thought that that was a good thing. I guess it's a child. I don't know, but I guess it was good. She said it was good. I'm going to say it was good too. So Dwayne and he couldn't be there because whatever the situation is. And, um, but surprisingly, Neek's mom and um, her, her mom's partner was there. So I was like, oh, they, maybe they brought Kaiser. That's probably what it was. Because I, I know when Nick was out of town, then the mama didn't be there to take care of the kid while they there. So yeah, I saw them there. But anyway, they have a whole sit down. And then, um, Lindsay brings up, um, what happened, the whole fight situation. And Malone was like, she didn't like that she you know, hit her or whatever. And she really saying it really ain't no coming back from that. She just kind of over Danny when it came to that. And, um, Lindsay just trying to figure out what's going on. And we all know that Lindsay is pretty much, you know what I'm saying? On the side of Danny and Morgan and Milan's whole thing is I wasn't on nobody's side, but when she got sneak hit, by Danny, it, it it forced her to pick a side. So Ashley was like, it's like they have two two sides and then they have a boat with an island, a boat that passes between the two. So I guess they're trying to figure out how they're going to make this thing work. Um. Oh, and it was something else I want to talk about with Lindsay. Lindsay's um, husband came down and they went and bought some stuff for the baby. So she was happy about that. All right. So then this is the last scene, the episode, the last scene of the episode when the um, other girls get together. Apparently it's Halloween now. 
So it's almost like they recently just filmed this. So, cause it's like, it was like Halloween. So, um, they're at a place and they talk about the whole sit down between Mackenzie and, um, Danny and Danny brought her purse and she said, that's the purse that got the receipts in it to protect our black girls or whatever, protect black women purse. And the comment, pretty much this conversation was like, Danny was saying that the math ain't mapping math. And when it came down to the timeline with Rashad and Mackenzie and all that stuff, and Megan over there drunk. She don't even know what's going on with the conversation. And Morgan is just like, will they ever get together again to have an event? And Megan said, yeah, they're having a slumber party. Uh, no, a, a, yeah, a slumber pajama party. So that's going to be the next time they get together. Um, Actually, it seemed like the girls did have a good time. So, yeah, that was pretty much it with that conversation. So it looks like the next episode is going to be a lot better. Um, that's when they really going to get to arguing and fussing and all that stuff. But anyway, y'all, this Sheila be let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I know I forgot a lot, but I am tired and I'm sleepy and I'm about to go to bed. So yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what you think about this episode. Bye.